For today's guide, we will be looking at one of my favorite heroes to watch. However, I'll admit I haven't played her enough lately, only because I've just been playing a ton of Invoker. I've been into Invoker. Anyways, the hero is Spectre. She has one of the highest pick rates, one of the highest win rates. You see her in almost all pro games, and I'm sure some of you want to know, how do I play her? Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Navitz, representing my esports team, the Sploosh Troop, and once again today, this video is brought to you on behalf of Gamers Class. Alright, here's the breakdown of how we're doing things. We are first going with items, then we're going skills, talents, neutral items, replay analysis, build variations, and drafting considerations while we're talking about Spectre here. So I do have a build that I've kind of modified from uh the immortal faith build now everyone's kind of in the build list is recommending going for a radiance still and i'm not going to go with the radiance builds what we're going to do is something a bit different here and this is what a lot of pros have been doing i've been watching a lot of spectre games only played a couple because honestly i got onto an invoker trend and i couldn't stop but here's what the build is instead of going for a radiance you're going for more early game play our starting items are going to be ring or quelling blade, double tangos, a circlet, iron branch, and a fairy fire. That gives us a little bit of ability to be aggressive with the fairy fire that we can pop. Uh, it gives us a lot of a little bit of regen. We might need to send more out, but that should be a good starting build. The early game, what you want to do is complete a wraith band. Probably get a magic stick depending on what lane you're in, but a magic stick is usually really important on Spectre to keep you alive. Uh, then you're gonna build into drums before you even go for boots this is typically what we've been seeing and that's because by the time your drums are done or close to done uh, you're it, it's around the same time you hit level six which makes you have the potential to be a very big threat around the map with your haunt and your drum active charges now the way that the active works on on drums is you get six charges uh, and each one of them gives you four each charge gives you 45 attack speed 13% movement speed uh, To all allies for in to all nearby allies for six seconds So you get 45 attack speed 13% movement speed plus base 20 movement speed six to all attributes 1.5 mana regeneration really good item right now really good build up item so the mana regen also really helps you uh, in terms of farming. And then what you're going to do is get yourself an early infused raindrop. Aside from the magic block, it also gives you 0.8 mana regeneration. This really helps with farming with spectral dagger. The mana regeneration is really important on spectre. You should also be flying yourself clarities while you're farming jungle and things like that. The after the drums, you're going to go ahead and get your power treads and finish your magic wand. Now, this is going to be the beginning of your build. So this is your early game. Now, instead of going for Radiance, what we want to do is buy Manta as our next item. So the build is go for drums, get your power treads, get your Yasha. And each one of these component buildups is a pretty big timing. You can basically look to haunt around each one of these buildups. So you haunt around the time that you have your drums, haunt around the time you have your power treads, haunt around the time you have your Yasha, haunt around the time you have your Manta. And then, you know, at, from there on, from then forward, you're just looking to haunt whenever there's a good haunt opportunity while farming away from your map. You basically play four heroes around the map while your hero farms in a lane that's farthest away from being in danger or in like the safest area after after you get your core manta you're gonna go for scotty next item and i've been really liking scotty a lot more lately scotty's really good because while you haunt it applies your cold attack to everybody uh slowing them slowing them significantly it gives you a ton of stats and it helps you chase down people. Uh, the stats are really good because you have the Manta to escape and then you have a talent that really helps you escape in the minus eight seconds sp spectral dagger. So usually you can run away in the tree line or something like that. After the Scotty, you're probably typically gonna buy an Abyssal Blade. Now these are all big items. They're, they're a lot of build up. So your next, you know, you go to Basher into Abyssal. Sometimes you're gonna wanna go for your Butterfly. Sometimes, depending on uh, who you're playing against, you might need to build, pick up a, a, a Monkey King bar. There are instances where you'll, where you'll need to pick up a BKB after your Scotty or maybe even after your Manta, really depending on the game. But uh, most of the time you probably don't need it. You can probably skip the BKB in most games 
uh, if you go for butterfly then your last item can be uh, either something dangerously good like this bloodthorn or you could go for something like a nullifier I don't opt to go for the diffusal blade after the core uh, manta some people like to go for diffusal it's up to you I prefer the Scotty over the diffusal it helps you tank up a lot more but the diffusal is really good because all of your haunt illusions do burn the damage from or do burn on uh, your haunt cast you know all the illusions that are hitting they, they do the diffusal burn uh, so that's kind of that's kind of build up don't forget to buy the raindrops I think I mentioned that but don't forget to buy the raindrops now our skill build is going to be pretty standard almost every single time you're probably gonna go spectral dagger two points in dispersion usually now instead of going for two points in dispersion you can go one point in desolate which helps you when you get your level six but I think two points in dispersion is usually best for laning, especially at level four. It gives you 12% damage reflected. So the the damage uh, that was going to hurt you doesn't hurt you anymore, and it hurts your enemy. This is really strong, especially when you get to level four. It means you basically have 22% additional damage reduction. Um, anyways, uh, it, it, dispersion is really good. Desolate, what desolate does is it lets you do bonus damage if a hero doesn't have anyone in a 425 radius around them. So that's great if you're haunting around and killing a lot of people or you're chasing down supports, stuff like that. Ooh, uh, nullifier is also good for chasing down supports because it gets rid of stuff like ghost scepters, it gets rid of stuff like yules, it gets rid of stuff like glimmer capes. Uh, so if you're if you're if there's supports you really want to be hunting down, consider getting a nullifier after um the scotty but an abyssal blade is also really really good uh, anyways back to back to the build then we're gonna go ahead and max out haunt um at level eight here we are gonna take one point and desolate so from seven for four straight points in spectral dagger then level eight one point and desolate level six we have haunt we do want to be using haunt around level six and then we just finish off our build normally uh, with our talents being taken at 10, 15, 20, and 25. The talents that we want to take at level 10, we want to take five to all stats. It's usually better than five health regen um, pretty much all the time. Level 15, we want to take minus eight seconds spectral dagger. The plus 12 desolate damage is good, but your spectral dagger, it's not only your, uh, it's not only a really good chase down it's not a, just a slow it's a fantastic escape mechanic for you it lets you path over anything so you can basically cast it over a cliff and then walk over that cliff or you can toss it into the tree line where people can't chase you easily level 20 instead of the plus 14 percent spectral dagger slow you're going to want to take the 400 health uh this is really good especially with dispersion the more health you have the longer you live the you get the dispersion as well you just become like such a, such a tank it's like almost impossible to kill you and at level 25 plus five percent dispersion again this just makes you tankier what you're doing is building yourself as a hero that can't die instead of a hero that just really easily kills because basically you're going to be easily killing anyways with good haunts playing around your team stuff like that you're going to be uh you're going to be killing left and right and then taking a look at neutral items the items that you want on specter uh first off iron talon best item that you can find broomstick candle would be very very good for you uh Poor man's shield and then either i don't know like an ocean's heart or or the the ironwood tree you would like to have a charge of royal jelly if you possibly could tier two items it's going to be ring or pupil's gift you can get the imp claw and sometimes it's dragon scale or vambrace tier three items you likely want to have the orb of destruction the paladin sword uh possibly the mind breaker as well mind breaker is really good on you because you haunt in and then you silence somebody uh, so mind breaker is nice and the titan sliver is really good tier that was tier three tier four uh when you're taking a look at what you want here a lot of the times you're looking for a leveler uh an illusionist cape is really good it, illusionist cape is just awesome especially for heroes that build stat items like like um scotty because your illusions gain the stats they don't gain things like damage like if you build a daedalus your illusions won't get that bonus damage but if you build stat items they will get stronger and tankier from from the bonus stats uh so i would say probably look like you're hoping for an illusion escape a leveler ninja gear is okay um and then yeah that's kind of i would kind of go for those the minotaur horn 
sometimes, but not really. And then tier fives, if you get to there, just all hell breaks loose. Take whatever the best one is that you think for the game in that situation. Um, and that is basically our overview of the items and the build. Like I said, we're switching away from the Radiance. Most people, most guides are recommending Radiance. Uh, and I don't think that that's the kind of like the standard way to play it anymore, especially watching a lot of pubs. So there are a few build variations. A lot of people have been doing different stuff on Spectre lately. You can go Radiance. We'll talk more about build variations later. For now, we're gonna hop into a replay. All right, this is actually one of my favorite streamers playing the Spectre, our good friend Gork. And we're gonna take a look at some of his starting items. I do like uh, the change up here. He goes for a Ring of Regen, uh, Iron Branch, Quelling Blade, and Tango. Now, I will let you guys know that this game is not the perfect Spectre game. You're gonna see a lot of stuff go poorly for Spectre. You're gonna see um, how he advances in the game, how he comes back into the game. There are mistakes that are made. There are things that are done really well, but not all of your games are gonna be perfect. And it's important sometimes to watch replays or watch games where you don't have a perfect game or you don't have a, like, you know, you're not going 12 and 0 because you're not always going to go 12 and 0. Sometimes you're going to die. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. Sometimes you're going to overextend. And when that kind of stuff does happen, you're going to want to be uh, be able to know how to recover. So what we see Gork doing here is cutting some trees to start. Um, so he has vision here of the tiny when he comes through. This is so Jakiro can hit the tiny. Jakiro is ranged while tiny is melee so cutting these trees and giving jakiro a vision of the tiny instead of letting tiny play around the tree line is a nice a nice little play coming out of gork right at the beginning uh and he does he is playing against a level uh a level or a, a silencer see what he did right there that was uh that it seems kind of small but it's kind of it, it it's important to to know what he did he leveled up his spectral dagger and he used it early. The way he used his dagger was by attacking the ranged creep one time and then daggering through it immediately after, not giving a silencer the time to be able to right click down that ranged creep, that creep. That means he gets the kill, he spends some mana, he does some damage to the silencer all at the same time. And here he goes throwing down another spectral dagger on silencer. So he's been hit with two now. And he's been able to get most of the last hits. He's at 7-0, and 0, which is really good for the first two creep waves. It does mean that his creep wave is going to be pushing forward. But sometimes that just kind of happens. You end up getting your... Especially when you have spectral, spectral dagger, you're going to end up getting your creep wave pushed forward a lot. Now, he does have a point in dispersion, which is going to make him tankier. There are a lot of creeps here and a lot of damage coming out on... Jakiro, but he does the he does that little trick again and he almost kills the silencer for he almost kills the silencer however he gets tossed back by tiny a really nice play by tiny nearly gets the kill on silencer but ends up actually going down himself so that's pretty unfortunate and now silencer gets a whole double creep wave under his tower basically yeah he gets a more than a double creep wave under his tower he gets the last hit three ranged and i don't know a whole bunch of melee creeps here it's just really really good for silencer the this also is really really bad for specter because when he comes back here all these creeps this whole wave is going to get denied as well he can't really do anything because it's all under tower so he can't come under there to farm so now the only thing moving towards him from that sec that next creep wave is these two creeps which isn't very good they did try to salvage this by pulling the lane which is kind of okay he's going to be able to get some farm not all of it but still some and he does have himself a magic stick picked up. It's important to pick up and recognize what your lanes like. If there's heroes that cast a lot of spells, you're going to be want to pick you're going to want to be picking up magic sticks early. You see that he is building into his drums. Uh he started building into his drums. He's also going to get a wraith band. So the crown is part of the build up of drums. It's a really good component if we take a look at what we need to build drums. Uh, it won't show us here whatever we need a crown we need a sage's mask and i think we need like a circlet or something like that so he will be building the components into it uh oh there it is we need a sage's mask we need a wind lace and then there's the drums he's gonna opt to actually skip the wraith band because he's kind of fallen behind here he, he would get the wraith band if you could you can see he had it queued up but he won't be able to get it now what he's doing and playing around this area of the map is trying to secure 
all of these neutral creeps for himself and then bring these creeps back under his tower here. Shikiro single pulled, so now he has a lot of creeps moving forward. Uh, at some point, he's going to want to be aggressive on the silencer, has the creep wave under his tower, and Shikiro is just throwing out some liquid fire and some, uh, what are these blasts called? Liquid fire and dual breaths on the silencer. Now, silencer's taking a lot of damage. He's slowed by the spectral dagger. He might be able to get away here. Nope. He's going to die. And there we go. A little bit of comeback. Gold for Gork. Kind of low on health, but he does have the iron branch and the tango. If he wants to use them both, he can do that, or he can just use the tango. Enough gold right there to complete his drums. So he's going to have drums completed, and that's going to let him be more aggressive in the lane. The Kiro is probably going to pull right now because the wave is under their tower, which is a little unfortunate for them. They don't have a creep wave right here. If they had a creep wave right here, they Spectre would either be farming it or considering stacking it or pulling it. Uh most likely and the five minute ruins are going to come up jakiro is not able to contest the tiny tiny is pretty dangerous uh, even though he's only level three and here we see the wave coming underneath the tower inspector is just going to do his best to farm up everything he can under the tower using the spectral dagger again to hit creeps and to attack the silencer backing up a little bit does have the full wand now he went for the full wand early this game because he's playing against the silencer pops his drum charge and this is big a drum charge is absolutely worth getting the kill on silencer there jakiro very nicely gives him a salve by the way supports if you're playing support you are going to want to have salves for your carries the salves that you buy are not for yourself and now he's pushing this wave out with his spectral dagger again Hurting the tiny, he has mana regeneration, more mana regeneration now than he did before because of the drums of endurance. He's probably going to buy himself a raindrop soon or try to get his treads. Uh, I would like to see a raindrop. Raindrop is pretty good against tiny, uh, and it's also really good for the mana regeneration. I have been making it a point myself to personally buy a raindrop in almost every single game I play because I always forget about it. It's not available until three minutes into the game. Where is it? It's not available until three minutes into the game. So I usually for or I had been in a bad habit of not buying it. So I just said, hey, buy this item every single game. Now, again, they're using another drum charge and they're trying to go on the silencer. Unfortunately for him, there is a rotation coming out of Skyrath. Skyrath has a haste, he is very fast, bottle haste, and basically casting his concussive shot and his arcane bolt, both at level four, doesn't even have his mystic flare yet. And that's really, really unfortunate for Spectre. So we see a good rotation from Skyrath to get the kill on Spectre, and that's a burned drum charge. Now you can replenish oh, another build that's kind of not, I'm not going to show you guys or talk about it right now, but I'll, I'll probably make a quick video about it at some point. But another build that, ha or a certain type of build, has been becoming popular, and that's going double drums. Like, I've been seeing Spectres or Terror Blades by two drums of Endurance, because it does give you the movement speed, it gives you a lot of stats, a lot of mana regeneration, and you get to use all the charges. Double drums isn't as bad as it sounds, you know? It's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and you also can buy the recipe for drums to replenish all your drum charges again. So that's 600 gold. I'm pretty positive about that. I'll double check that. Uh, if it's not true, I'll, I'll amend that. But I'm, I'm pretty positive that's true. I, I checked it recently and it was. So yeah, you know, that's true. That's true. You can, you can get more drum charges. And here we see another rotation coming out. And Spectre dies. That's very unfortunate. So they really, it would be great if they had some kind of they did have vision I was busy talking about double drums so to me I think that was just Spectre being a little bit careless there um, he should have saw that rotation unless the Skywrath was smoked which I don't think he was the Skywrath is actually getting really close to a rod of Atos this makes things really hard for Spectre so we think about why Spectre wants to go Manta really early in this game. Aside from it being the standard build why would it be the natural build to go for in this game like, why, why is this how we want to play on Spectre? Well, there's a Silencer, and there's a, a Skywrath Mage. Both of them have a silencing spell that stops you from being able to cast Haunts, stops you from being able to cast uh, your Spectral Dagger. So if you want to be able to escape, you want to play around that. Now, here we go, seeing Spectre try to make a play mid. His Haunt is available. Haunts in, drops his Drums of Endurance, 
is doing damage to the silencer but there come the reinforcements and spectre is actually going to die again so we see a lot of deaths coming out on spectre early he's two and four right now tried to make a good play but that's what you have to do you have to try to make plays like that um our doom is just kind of sitting top here he's also looks like a little bit behind uh the morphling is doing really actually the doom is crazy far behind he's only Oh, never mind. This is a position four doom. So there's a dark seer doing something somewhere. There he is. He's bottom. And now Spectre is going to try to just get as much farm as he can. He almost has his power treads, his drums, and his power treads. Even though he's died a lot of times, still going to have power treads around the 10 minute mark. Only has three charges of drums left. But he does have the best item that you can find on an early game hero. And that is the iron talon. So with the iron talon, he should be able to start catching up a little bit on farm. Notice that little tiny bit of efficiency right there. He cuts down the tree and shift cues walks towards this creep camp. Uh, I know it doesn't seem big, but that is big. That little bit of, uh, of an efficiency advantage, cutting down trees to move around the map faster. You'll notice that pro players or that good players will pretty much always do it. Now here we see him being aggressive again. Pops a drum charge. Look how fast he's moving across the map. They get a kill on the Skywrath. That's the mid player. That is absolutely huge. They catch a bounty as well. That's going to be enough to get him his drums. He's going to do a little bit more damage and now he's just farming up on their side of the map. The other really good thing for Spectre this game is that he has a comeback mechanic in terms of Magnus's in power. There are a lot of Magnuses being picked uh, these these days, so empower. So getting empowered on a melee core is really nice. And actually, Spectre does go down again. He kind of overdid it. Ishvor is now following. All right, we had a surprise follow while I'm not streaming. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, Spectre is going to be alive in 16 seconds. Has the Drums of Endurance coming pretty soon. Oh, not the Drums of Endurance. Has the Power Treads. Is going to be farming this area pretty soon. Sorry, this is what I meant to say. Uh, when Spectre has Haunt off of cooldown. So he'll have Haunt about 30 seconds from now. He wants to make a play. At some point, he's going to come here and start farming this triangle. Uh, Magnus is taking it right now. He's going to take the bottom farm here. Probably after his next haunt or maybe when he gets like level 8 or 9, he'll probably start taking the triangle for himself uh, and then haunting out. But right now he's kind of in a dangerous position. Morphling has two levels on him actually. Morphling is going to be going for the Lincoln Sphere first. Uh, and that kind of makes sense considering that he's against a... Oh, here's a Spectre Haunt coming out again. Finds a play top on the Skywrath. You notice that every time Haunt is off cooldown, he's making plays. He's already used five drum charges. Already used five drum charges, but he doesn't care because it, to him, if he can get kills and get back into this game, it's way more important than saving his drum charges for later. When you use a haunt, if you can kill a corp hero with a drum charge, you definitely do it. And now he continues to farm out the lane with his spectral dagger. Another thing you can do with your spectral dagger, actually, by the way, let me just finish talking about what I was saying on Morphling. Morphling is going for the Lincolns first, and that makes sense because he's playing against a Doom. And if he gets doomed early, he'll be in a lot of trouble. Now we see Spectre trying to take this is a little ambitious, trying to take this double stack, but he's using his Spectral Dagger to go through, uh, do as much damage as he can to it. This this is like super dangerous. I don't know if he's going to be able to get away with this. Yeah, we actually do see a smoke rotation coming out here. He's going to come back and Tiny finds him. There it is. He goes down one more time. So that that was that was a little bit that was a little bit too ambitious on Spectre trying to take a double stack. But what you can do with your Spectral Dagger, it's a really good farming mechanic for those of you who don't know how to farm two camps at once with Spectre. What you do is you start farming something like this camp right here. You attack the camp and then you come walk around it and then you Spectral Dagger through the camp into the next camp area. And then you finish off this camp and walk forward and it does damage to both of them. And it does damage to both of the camps and it gives you pathing to cross faster. It saves you a lot of time in farming. Now we see Spectre uh, is going for the Yasha next, seeing if he can just push out this wave here. They are fortifying. He's probably not able to, to be honest. This is a lot of pressure coming out mid, and they just lost a big team fight. So we're going to speed this up a little bit and see how Spectre plays the map from his player perspective. So now he's back to these Ancients using that Iron Talon. Uh, so the ways that Spectre can get back into the game or 
get a, like pretty far ahead are pretty similar to the same ways Faceless Void does it, and that's by playing around Haunt or playing around Chronosphere. Your team makes a play somewhere and you jump in. You don't always, this is another thing. When you have Haunt ready, you don't want to be the one always jumping in first. You don't want to Haunt in and then, uh, rea and then reality rift to your, your illusions location before the fight even starts. Usually you want to be picking up the tail end of the fight uh, and you can also reality rift or rift to multiple illusions at once. So you can bounce back and forth between your illusions. This is especially important to know uh, if you're a new player. Not all new players know this. You don't have to just jump once. You can jump multiple times during a haunt and it's especially important to do if you're fighting against, for example, a really squishy support that can die quickly or somebody who's getting ganked like you gank somebody you kill them and then you want to follow up and kill the next person you can just haunt over to them so you have to be paying attention to the map trying to get as much control of the map as possible now or trying to get as much information from the map as possible having information is really important to spectre now what spectre sees is that there's heroes at the bottom of the map there's heroes mid so he knows he's safe to farm that top triangle they do manage to get a kill on the uh undying right there which is really good for him and Spectre is coming in to try to make a play. Has the haunt available, but since Jakiro is dead and Doom's not up yet, they're not going to do anything. They're just going to wait, and Spectre is going to keep farming. It would be in, it would be in the best interest of the dire side of the of the map or the dire squad to try to find and kill Spectre. Uh, when the haunt is off cooldown. This is kind of how you have to think about playing against Spectre. If you're initiating on Spectre when Spectre has haunt off of cooldown, then you potentially are stopping him from making a haunt rotation. The only problem is, let's say you kill, let's say you rotate and kill Spectre. Spectre always has, and you'll, you'll see Sammy Boy do this a lot. Spectre always has the potential to just buy back and haunt back into a fight no matter where it is. So if you spend a lot of resources killing him and then a team fight breaks out, Spectre can buy back and haunt into a fight. Using buybacks on Spectre is actually really important. A huge thing to consider. Don't be scared to buy back, haunt in, and win a team fight for yourself because a lot of the times the amount of map control you'll gain and the amount of gold you'll get back from the buyback is pretty much it, it, it makes it worth it most of the time now we see an rp go down a spectral dagger that is a lot but it is a core silencer now the rotations coming through there is a very nice ice wall specter doing damage hopping the haunt as well so the haunt is doing a little bit extra damage they kill and now he's going to try to back up here instead of okay so he tried to spectral dagger towards the sky wrath he could have also done it over top of this uh, cliff here and walked over it. We're gonna see Magnus die, which is unfortunate and here comes Morphling try to kill him Now he's probably gonna end up using spectral dagger to escape in a direction that they can't chase him easily So you see he goes through the tree line here Which lets him escape before other people can catch up to him So that's what I was talking about in terms of spectral dagger being your escape mechanism You have it every 16 seconds when it's uh, when you get your level 15 talent you have it every eight seconds So every eight seconds you can use it. It has a duration of seven seconds. It gives you like a pretty awesome pathing advantage. I think if Spectre gets nerfed, which we might see a small nerf on Spectre in the next patch, I think we might see a nerf to the Spectral Dagger. Uh, I don't think that, or maybe like small nerfs to Dispersion as well. But it's 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 Dagger, man. Dagger's Dagger's how you play Spectre. Now there comes the Skywrath dropping everything on Spectre. That's a lot of damage coming out. So we see Spectre dies again. It's almost 20 minutes, and he doesn't have his Manta yet. Morphling has the Lincolns, is very strong. But the advantage for Spectre this game is that they don't have any really good, reliable, hard stuns. They have tiny, uh, they have tiny, they have tiny, and they have the, what's it called? Rod of Atos on Skywrath. And we see Morphling denies the Skywrath very nicely. So let's just go, go ahead and zoom back to when Spectre's alive. Spectre's alive again, does not have Haunt available though. So he's gonna go back to farming. He really wants to finish up his Manta as the recipe in his stat in his stash. And if he has Manta, he can break out of that Rod of Atos and run away from the Mystic Flare that Skywrath is throwing on him. He can also dispel a lot of Silencer's damage. 
make it just makes him a lot stronger so we'll see his farming patterns for now he's waiting for his haunt to be up he's not going to go to this fight a lot of players would feel like they need to sit around this tower and throw daggers if you're a specter you don't want to be around your tower throwing daggers what you want to be doing is exactly what gork's doing here and that's farming a free lane the radiant or sorry the dire don't want to come up here to deal with specter there's nothing going on over here right like there's no he's not posing a real threat to this tower he's not even hitting it yet uh so what they want to do is they want to push forward and play more aggressive on the map. Spectre wants to play away from the enemy team. So if we see what vision Spectre has right now, he basically knows where everyone is, which gives him the, uh, the ability to farm this lane and then back out. Now he's going to back out and just go through the jungle camps uh, where he can. He's going to go through these jungle camps where he can, throws the dagger out. Uh, gonna come back jungle this camp and try to finish off his manta really really soon gets surged by the dark seer and with this creep camp he should be able to get his manta yeah so it, it is a little bit slow but he, he gets the manta he has died seven times now seven deaths that kind of sucks sees the opportunity to kill silencer takes it now this is you see what he was doing that was his perspective he was looking mid deciding if he wanted to rift over to mid or to stay top he didn't want to rift mid because if he did that he would put himself in danger of getting shotgunned or killed by the morphling tiny and uh and skywrath Really good decision not to go mid there. Now you see how he uses his Manta right there to dispel the Rod of Atos, keeps him safe, and now he's no longer in danger of dying. He's just gonna go play the other side of the map. While they're up there, while they're all up there, he doesn't have to worry about them. Uh, even though his whole team died again, he doesn't have to worry about being up there anymore. He can just continuously farm other areas so he sees them coming towards him does he see them or do they smoke yeah he sees them coming towards him he's gonna have to back out here he's probably gonna spectral dagger away nope he's just gonna walk away has the manta just in case he gets a toast or anything like that so 90 seconds on haunt cooldown i was about to say should be sending himself a clarity has the clarity he's gonna pop it he holds his ring of regen still and then he's gonna go out and continue farming 77 seconds on the haunt cooldown and we'll see what his farming patterns are like now he might engage in a fight if they're taking roche which they are so what the enemy team's doing is very good so let's let's pause and think about it real quick the enemy team's making a very good play they know that specter just used haunt to kill the silencer somewhere around here it was uh, and then they know that the fight broke out here so they know haunt has to be on cooldown instead when haunt is on cooldown specter's idea would be to farm this area of the map he would want to come all the way down here and farm this stuff around here since th they know that they're gonna either force specter back to this fight or without haunt or they're gonna get a free aegis and instead it looks like specter is gonna show up so let's see how this plays out they do get the initiation on tiny and oof tiny will die now we see the the a lot of damage coming out of the manta illusions they get a little bit of a desolate action going for themselves which is really strong a buyback from tiny a buyback from jakiro they're all posturing up around roshan nobody wants to give this up now and here we see a big rp come through a lot of damage coming out from skywrath on specter specter teleports home in the middle of that fight he knew there was no more stuns available so he just teleported home that's a really big heads up play but it is going to give the the dire squad the morphling in particular uh the ability to take this aegis i don't think they're going to be able to come back and stop it Shakira's going to throw down an ice wall probably nope not going to throw down an ice wall and now specter is just doing what he had to do they do put aegis on morphling and that's really really good for the dire squad um I feel like if they had something other than a silencer position three, they would be in a much better position this game to win it, but the silencer doesn't help them a whole lot. Now, Spectre does have Haunt off cooldown. However, he knows that he doesn't... Let's see what he sees. He doesn't know exactly where the enemy team is. Now he sees them bottom. So he's thinking about using Haunt. He's thinking about playing around his... around his Darkseer. He knows that there's heroes top... So yeah, you can see him clicking top and instead of deciding to go there, he doesn't. Right now, he's right now Spectre is playing 
or Gork is playing really, really, uh, not aggressively. He's farming parts of the map, like the, the most dangerous parts of the map that he can farm without dying. Like he was farming this camp at the bottom right of the map while two heroes were there. He knew he could do that because he knew there was heroes top and in the jungle. He had some vision of that. We saw them pop up on the mini map for him. So he did have that vision. Now we see another fight getting close to breaking out. Uh, and they have to play defensively here because Morphling has the Aegis. So looking to possibly make a play on Tiny. He sees them top. His, here, his teammates are there. If they go, he's probably going to go. He sees other heroes on the map as well. And instead of going, he's just going to keep farming. Now watch this. He's also still tread swapping. Every time he, almost every time he uses dagger, right there he did. Almost every single time he uses dagger, he's tread swapping. Sees the Morphling. And it's just going to continue pushing out waves. So if they decide to push the tier 2 tower bottom, Spectre is going to get to farm the mid wave and he's going to get to farm the top jungle. That's how you have to think about it. Where can you go on the map if they if they play aggressively like if they put a team together to push your towers if they don't put more people down here or if they don't put multiple people to take that tower bottom um then he and he doesn't know where they are on the map he has to play more defensively which is what you see him doing right now he's retreated back to his triangle but if he saw multiple heroes down there pushing that tower he would have played a little bit closer towards the top jungle now the fact that they don't have a tier 2 tower means that they can't take the outpost if they could take this outpost right here they would have a lot more map control and spectre would be able to more fr more freely farm up here since they can't take that outpost since that's no longer a thing you can do uh spectre is farming in the uh the safer positions that he can farm in and they're looking to make a play now. He does have Haunt available. And there we go. The Haunt comes out. It looks like he's looking to kill the Skywrath. But Spectre dies. So the Morphling ends up killing the Spectre. I think Morphling still has the Aegis to you up for another minute and 60 seconds. Don't know how great that engagement was for them. I think they probably shouldn't have gone for that fight. They should have just kept juking the Dire Squad around. Magnus kind of initiated with his RP, so it sort of forced them into that fight. So we'll speed up to the point that Spectre's alive again and see how he decides to play it while Haunt's off of cooldown. Now he is trying to get to his scotty next he is pretty far behind only has the ultimate orb at this point will be building the scotty tanks him up a lot stops uh healing regeneration now and you see the little spectral dagger trick where he daggers one camp and also hits the second at the same time while clearing his pathing another thing you'll notice that spectre didn't do here and this is a big mistake a huge huge mistake that lots of lower level players make all right, let's see if Spectre is going to be able to kill this. No, uh, he didn't make the mistake of teleporting out of his base. It gives him the ability to teleport back. So he knows Silencer can't be at this fight. The Aegis expires, so he can come here, teleport in, and fight. Pops his Manta because Manta Illusions use Desolate damage. I mean, use Dispersion damage. And now they're going to win a fight in the mid lane. So because he knew Silencer was there... A lot of that stems, all of that stems from the fact that Spectre didn't waste his teleportation. A lot of, a lot of heroes would, when they, when they respawn to life, instead of walking out here and farming this camp and then farming this camp, they would like teleport here and like farm th like Spectral Dagger this way and walk to this wave and just sit in a wave and show where they are. Spectre is smart. I mean, Gork is smart. He knows what he's doing. Instead of doing that, he walked out. And then he saw that Silencer was here. So he knew that Silencer couldn't be at this fight. So he teleported back and jumped into the fight, even though the Aegis was just expiring. So that was a really, really good play by Spectre. That's the kind of stuff you, that's the kind of heads up stuff that's going to really separate your wins from your losses a lot, a lot of the time. So small, not small, those, those plays like that, that are not small, but they seem like small decisions. It's not a lot of really big decisions that make people win or lose dota games it's usually a lot of the small things all right and so we'll see we'll see we see the posturing up right now they are taking the tier 2 tower inspector does have haunt available we get a silence out he doesn't want to waste his manta yet 
Now his Manta's popped. He's going on the Silencer because Silencer is a pretty easy target. Decides to switch targets. Hits the Morphling. Tries to run away from the Morphling. Morphling's pretty strong, though. Doing a lot of damage to Spectre. We'll see if Spectre can survive this. Doom coming out on... Oof. Doom and Morph Morphling is dead. Silencer is probably going to die to the Doom. They're chasing down the Tiny. Spectre is back in the fight, baby. 600 health. Has the minus 8 second Spectral Dagger cooldown. That will give him enough gold to buy his point booster just about. Yeah, he has enough gold to buy his point booster and his... Uh, And his ultimate orb. And you see what he did there. He actually tried to make a play to save his hero. He came into that mystic flare and popped his manta so he could split the damage amongst multiple people. And here comes Undying. Is Undying going to be able to kill Spectre? He does come in. There is... Nope. The root. He's going to keep running. Just keep running. Oh, no. Oh, no. The flare. Yes. Darkseer comes in with the Guardian Greaves. Dude, the Guardian Greaves on Darkseer saves Spectre. Inspector is back to being a farming machine. So now 47 seconds. So that fight is basically ending right now. That fight from that last haunt is ending now. And it's only 40 seconds till the next haunt is available. So the longer the fights are, the better it is for Spectre and his team. Because first off, they have long cooldowns. They have long ultimates. They have RP. They have Doom. And they have uh, Haunt. So those are all very long cooldowns. If those cooldowns are all... If, if everything has just been used... And then you win or lose a team fight, and then another team fight starts within 30 or 40 seconds. You know, as the enemy team, you're safe. You don't have to really worry about getting major, taking a major amount of damage from those big ultimates. However, on the other hand, if a team fight is really long and you see something like this happen, you're like, ah, crap. If we start fighting soon, they're going to have Haunt off of cooldown. They're going to have Doom again. And that's what Morphling is worried about. Morphling doesn't want to get doomed. He also has a E-Blade, Lincoln's, and Eye of Scotty right now. In terms of farm and net worth, how is he doing? Morphling is top. Spectre, Darkseer, and Magnus are next. So... I mean, Morphling's doing what he can in this game, but it's it's really rough. I think the position I, I think the position three silencers just not very good. Anyways, we see the BKB get popped by Magnus. Spectre does not want to break the silence with his Manta. Instead, he wants to wait it out. And now they're gonna see if they can make something happen. That's their global silence wasted. So while the big global from the Dyer's team is gone, we do have all the ultimates up. Again, and here he goes, blinks in, dooms the Skywrath. Skywrath is going to go down. He's switching between targets, switches from the Skywrath over to the... Oof. Switches from the Skywrath over to the Silencer, now onto the Morphling. And Morphling's taking a lot of damage. Now he's morphing quite a bit of health. Barely manages to get away, but they do kill the Tiny. They kill the Undying. And look at that surge speed coming forward. He is trying to stun Spectre. Spectre is going to dagger him, but... That's going to be that, and I'm pretty sure that is the game-winning fight. Spectre making everything work around the haunt, saving his ultimates. I can't stress enough how, how big it is not to waste your Manta. If you're, if you're nowhere near a Silencer ultimate like that, and your team's running away, they're trying to catch them, but they haven't really caught them, you don't want to waste your Manta just to, so you can haunt unless you can guarantee get kills and i'm pretty sure this game is just over here yeah so this game ends at this point i i specter's team just walks into the base here and tries to uh tries to fountain dive so it takes another couple minutes for it to end but this is essentially the end of the game we saw a huge amount of comebacks from this team they played kind of hyper aggressively on specter early which i really liked to see uh, they made a few mistakes, especially a few mistakes in terms of team fighting. They also got initiated on a couple of times. There was a smoke play on Spectre over here that cost him his life. There was a couple of plays at bottom where he died. He did die on the haunt mid. Yet still, Spectre is such a strong late game hero, especially in a draft like this. Uh, it's really, really hard for Spectre to lose. And considering the pick rate and the win rate of Spectre right now, if there's a hero that you ever thought of learning, this should be it. All right, so looking at the hero meta at this 
point in time, the pick percentage and win percentage in the Divine and Immortal brackets, you see that Spectre is picked 53.9% of the times. One of the highest, or no, his, sorry, his win percentage is 53.9% uh, with a pick percentage of 21.69. Uh, only heroes that are close to him are Doom and Phoenix at the moment. Actually, Magnus is also way up there i didn't realize magnus was that high magnus i, I understand I, I get that magnus is super strong i just didn't know he was that high in terms of win percentage so that's kind of how you figure out which heroes are really good by taking a look at which ones are getting picked the most with the highest win rates uh and especially in the immortal brackets it means that people are going to be picking to counter specter and they can't even do it so let's take a look at some of the builds that people have been going for. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to play Spectre, but this is the one that's been most popular in, I would say, the uh, the uh, pro scene. Yeah, definitely the pro scene. Uh, I've been seeing the drums into Manta, into either Scotty or Diffusal or Abyssal or Butterfly or something like that. But we'll see what some people have been doing. So Blade Mail into Manta, into Scotty, into Abyssal, into Butterfly. Not a bad build uh treads to begin with it okay cool we've seen some midas is midas is becoming more popular on spectre that's for sure so we see midas into power treads into manta butterfly abyssal now i do like the butterfly and the abyssal i i think those are really good pickups especially butterfly on spectre um here we see an old school build except for instead of instead of a it's a it's a not instead of a straight radiance it's a blade mail into radiance into manta into abyssal scotty butterfly and then eggs and refresher okay uh here we go another radiance build radiance manta scotty abyssal butterfly and you see the abyssal the reason the abyssal gets picked up so much is because you can haunt in an abyssal anybody and basically set up a kill on a squishy core or a squishy um support but most likely you'd want to kill a core so if you have two cores like the ones we just saw in the game the skywrath and the uh silencer you definitely want to be abyssaling them and killing those guys very very easily radiance manta <laughs> ages radiance manta abyssal scotty manta blade mail okay so this is drums into manta so this is kind of the build that we were going for, but he gets he goes for the the blade mail third. So this is drums into Manta into blade mail, then Abyssal and then Scotty. Scotty a little bit later. Drums into Manta into Scotty. So this is the kind of the build that we're advocating for right now. Uh, he even goes for double wraith bands early, so he's extra strong in the early game. Pretty nice, and actually also gets a nullifier. I love seeing nullifiers get picked up. Uh, Meteor Hammer is kind of a meme build. Not going to talk about that one. Early Abyssal, Manta, Agnum Scepter. Agnum Scepter is super interesting on Spectre. And let's look at a couple more here. Manta first, Radiance, Abyssal, Scotty. And then here we go. This is... So this is like the extra greed one. A lot of people do this. It, well, some people do this. It's going drums into Midas, into Treads, into Manta, into Scotty, and then Butterfly, and he's going for Abyssal next. So this is like the greediest way you could do it. You know, you get, you get already your early game fighting item, then you get an early game farming item. You kind of stick away from people. You haunt in, you fight, stay safe. Same thing here. Drums, Treads, Manta, Scotty, Abyssal. Drums, Treads, Diffusal, Manta, Scotty, or Abyssal, Scotty, uh, all, all pretty good items. So as you can see, the there are a lot of different viable builds on Spectre. The meta has been changing. Uh, the drums into Manta and then a strong third item, sometimes Abyssal, sometimes scotty sometimes butterfly whatever you happen to go with or you know play play with it try out different things but a lot of things are very viable on specter and specter right now is super meta super strong you should be able to gain mmr with the hero okay hero considerations now this is a lot to think about because <laughs> there's not a lot of stuff that's super good against specter right now heroes that build silver edge are are kind of good against Spectre because Spectre has two really strong strong passives. However, most of the heroes that build Silver Edge 
are not crazy meta at the moment. So one of them that I would think of that used to be pretty good but is out of the meta is Monkey King. Now, I saw... Who was it that did this? I can't remember. It might have been Alliance. It might have been... It wasn't Alliance. It might have been... It was... It was the four zoomers. It was the four zoomers. So they were playing against the Spectre. And what they drafted to play against the Spectre was really interesting. Um, it was a mid Monkey King. So Gunner was playing the mid Monkey King. And Sammy Boy was playing the Safe Lane Terror Blade. Now it's really hard. It's really hard to outscale Spectre. Terror Blade is one of the only heroes that can do it. Terror Blade is, can outscale the Spectre. Morphling can play against Spectre as well. Um. Slark can also be okay against Spectre. Slark can stop you from running away with your Spectral Dagger with his leash. Slark is a natural Silver Edge builder. Uh, and then Slark has a lot of escape if you're trying to engage on him. Uh, it's just that Slark is not mega great in the meta right now. So, I don't know. I wouldn't always advocate for building him. In terms of offlaners that you can play against Spectre... Things like things that can catch him are kind of okay, uh, like the legions, like your axes. You could go for a faster paced strategy uh, if if you're trying to, if you're playing against the specter before you let him get really big. You could go with something that that runs him over. So you can maybe go like a mid alchemist with a safe lane or with an off lane beastmaster. Beastmaster does pretty well against specter and lane. Um, things like that. Clinks can be pretty strong against him. However, once Spectre gets to a certain point, it's just like uh, Clinks probably isn't killing him, although he does a lot of damage. A mid hero that's good against Spectre is Viper. So Viper's Nether Toxin is a break, which means it acts the same. It acts the same as a Silver Edge. So if you're fighting into that. Uh, the downside is that Spectre can pretty easily kill Viper when he haunts in if there's any type of engage on him. He does have corrosive skin to help him stay alive, but uh, and another toxin. Um, it's it's just hard to close distance on uh, on Spectre. Uh, that's that's kind of that's kind of it for the heroes that I, I want to mention in terms of playing against Spectre. For the rest of them, you're basically trying not to die against Spectre. To be honest, you know, Wind Ranger might be okay. Uh, Wind Ranger might be okay, a little bit of Necrophos. People who can, even Pugna might be all right for a little bit, but if if you pick those kind of heroes, Spectre can eventually get a Nullifier. It's sort of it's sort of the play style, like how fast you can play the game, whether or not you can slow down Spectre's farm enough and play aggressive enough, take, take enough map control and get far ahead enough as a team that Spectre can't become that late game monster that just pretty much decimates a whole game that's kind of how you have to play against him uh if you if you want to win thank you for watching the specter guide hopefully there was some nice information for all of you there if you've never played specter i hope the replay really gives you an idea of how you should be playing around the map uh, and how you can come back into a game when you've fallen behind. Uh, I'm Navitz, represent my esports team, the Sploosh Troop, and this video was brought to you on behalf of Gamers Class Guys. Until next time, one love.